In today's tutorial, we have a Cyber Panel WordPress setup. So this is a Cyber Panel install on Vulture. So we're basically going to install Cyber Panel using a Vulture VPS. This is a very easy to do on Vulture. Vulture actually has a one-click setup here on their panel. So uh, really quite user-friendly nowadays. This is actually an update on the video I made last year when they didn't have um, the one-click setup. So this, this method is a more general method. You could use that on any um, system, but if you're using Vulture, uh, this makes it quite quick to set up. So uh, if you're wanting to set up uh, WordPress we're using Cyber Panel on Vulture, this is the perfect tutorial for you. Um, I'm even going to set up a basic website and run it through some page speed tests. Um, spoiler alert, the tests go really fast using Cyber Panel and Vulture high frequency. So um, if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. Now you can follow along this tutorial completely for free just by following the link in the description that'll bring you over to Vulture. You can also just go to ideaspot.com.au slash Vulture in your browser, that'll bring you here, go ahead and sign up. Now you just create an account with an email address and a password, I'm not a robot and create an account. You'll get an email that will bring you here, that'll give you your free credit. So you'll notice you've got free credit automatically applied here, there's no need to enter any code, the link automatically gives you the credit. So then it's just a matter of filling in your details, so it's just a name, country, uh, address, card, and you can tick this button, $0 deposit, so that means completely free during the trial period. Agree to the terms and go ahead and get started. So now that we're all signed up and logged in, we are in our dashboard under products here and we're gonna go ahead and deploy a new server here with that plus button. Okay, now the best value way of doing this is by using the cloud compute. This is the most affordable one and we're gonna be using high frequency. So you'll notice that there's actually high performance, Intel high performance, Intel high frequency and Intel regular. Now I think the regular one is a little cheaper but um, the high frequency one, I've benchmarked these all in a previous video, which I'll link as well, but um, the high frequency one is a little better than the high performance ones here. Uh, I think these are newer, but this one is a higher clock, and from what I benchmarked, this one is the best performance. So if it's available, go with the high frequency here. Now, for our location, pick something close to your audience. For example, a lot of my audience is North American, so I'll go with uh, New York there, um, but go with whichever you prefer. Now for CyberPanel, the quickest way of doing this is under Marketplace Apps and CyberPanel you'll find there and keep scrolling down here. So it runs totally fine with one gigabyte of memory. Uh, for most small websites, this is all you need, but you can scale up as you need. But for today, I'm just gonna use the cheapest one here. Now scrolling down, you can actually turn off these backups because they charge extra $1.20 for these backups, but CyberPanel actually has its own backup system. So you don't really need that one. Now you can leave the rest of this pretty much as default, just give your server a name, I'll call it Cyber Panel Tutorial, but name it as you like and go ahead and deploy. You'll get a success message here and you'll see your server is installing. So just wait a few minutes for this server to finish installing, so be patient here. All right, after a couple minutes, we can see it's changed to running there. Now we can head to our server and click this one and you can check out the details. Okay, first thing I'll do is set up a domain for this server. So we have an IP address here, this is our public IP address. We can link our domain name, point it over to this IP address right now. So I got my domain over at namecheap.com. I quite like using Namecheap, but wherever you got your domain from, it's gonna be very similar. You just need to find your DNS manager. So in Namecheap, it's under your domain list, under advanced DNS. You can add a few DNS records here. So we're gonna add an A record, host is gonna be at, and the IP address goes in there. We click tick to save that record on. We're gonna create another one for the actual panel itself. So I'm gonna call it CP for cyber panel and point that to the IP address as well. And we're gonna do one more here for uh, www. So that is a C name record, www. And we're gonna point that to uh, the domain name. So that is ideaspot XYZ, it's gonna go there. So that is basically all we need. If you already have records for the root and for www, just go ahead and replace them with these ones as well, um, if that's the case. Just a quick tip, if you're using Cloudflare for your DNS, you do need to turn the proxy off for your cyber panel uh, subdomain. So whatever you're using for your cyber panel subdomain, you can turn the proxy status off. So you've got that gray cloud there. Um, that's all you need to do in Cloudflare. Also, if you plan to use mail on here, if you've got a mail subdomain, an MX record, those need to be DNS only as well. Now we can go ahead and connect to our server IP address. So I usually like to use PuTTY to connect to my servers through SSH. The other way you can do it um, using Windows is just through the command line. You can easily bring up command line in Windows just by 
doing the shortcut to run, so that is window and R for run, and then you want to run something called CMD. So just type CMD in there, press OK, and you'll get a command line. So the command we use here is SSH root at, and then you put the IP address in. You can actually right click to paste your IP address there, press enter, and type yes for here, so Y-E-S for yes, and then we can put in the password. So you'll find the password there, so you click that one to copy the password. And again, we right click to paste it in, press enter, and that should connect. So here it's prompting us to do a system update. So if you get this, you put capital Y for yes, press enter and let it do its update. Okay, now we can actually get our Lightspeed password now with cat Lightspeed password like that. So just type in there, cat.lightspeed um, underscore password. All right, so now we can just highlight this and copy and paste this into a notepad. So just, uh, just drag across it and then control C to copy and then I can go ahead and paste that into a notepad. Just keep that safe because we're going to use this later. That is our admin password. Let me zoom in a bit here. So basically the user is going to be admin and the pass is going to be that. So that is what we're going to use to log into our panel in just a second. So to actually reach our panel, you'll see on our server details, if you scroll down, you've got sub panel. It can be reached on your IP address on port 8090. So let's just go ahead. You can put that into your browser. So the IP address and colon. 8090 that will give you an SSL warning at first so we click advance and proceed through the warning so this is our sub panel login page so the username is going to be admin and the password is the one we just created so we just paste those in and go ahead and sign in great now we are in sub panel so the first thing we like to do usually is replace this IP address with our domain name so to do that we're going to head over and create a website so we're going to create a website and we just need to fill this in so I'm going to use default package, owner is going to be admin. Our domain name in this case is going to be cp.idspotxyz. So this is the subdomain I want to run cyber panel on, cp. Email, I'm going to use PHP 8.1. The only additional feature I want to hear is SSL. So before we go ahead and create this, let's just double check to make sure our IP address and our subdomain is all working. So I'm going to use dnschecker.org. Just make sure it's hitting that IP properly. Uh, because you want to make sure that's working before we try and issue an SSL certificate. Um, but that looks like it's all working just fine. So we can go ahead and click create. It's going to say starting creation. So just be patient while this goes through its process here. And now it says successfully installed website successfully created. So from here, then we can go over to SSL and we're going to do host name SSL. And here we can select the website that we just created, CP, Ideasport, XYZ, issue SSL and just be patient here and that looks all good it says ssl issued you can now access cyber panel at your domain on port 8090 so we can go ahead and try that what i've noticed is the new ssl doesn't always work instantly if you open a new tab and try and access it you may still get an ssl warning so just restart your browser come back in a few minutes and it should be all good so after a couple of minutes i'll try this again after restarting chrome there we go that looks all good Again, same admin and password that we set up earlier in the tutorial. We can go ahead and log in. Now we have our own subdomain here on SSL. I'm going to save my password in now. So that looks all good. There's a couple of tweaks we should do to the website. Every time you set up websites, you should probably do this as well. So we list our websites and we're going to go to this one that we just made. Click manage. There's a couple of things here. So rewrite rules. We want to select the force HTTP to HTTPS. Save that on there. And the other one worth adding here is the open base to protection. So enable that one as well. So those are a couple of small security improvements you can usually do. Um, back to our dashboard, let's add a website to the root domain here. So ideas for XYZ, let's create a new one. So under websites, we are going to create a website and we are going to fill this in. So again, we are using the default package. The owner is admin and we're going to use the root domain this time. So ID spot XYZ, email, PHP 8.1. We're going to use SSL and open base to protection on this website as well. So you can actually add it at this point when you're setting it up rather than through that website manager like we did earlier. Um, go ahead and click create and just wait for it to do its thing here. So that took about a minute, but that looks all good. There's a few little tweaks we can do before we set this website up as well. So the default package, you can edit that under here if we list the packages and we click edit. 
So by default, there's limitations here on bandwidth and disk space. You can just change those to zero for unlimited or increase them to whatever you like. I might just change them to zero here. Um, go ahead and save that in. The other thing you can do is, because we're going to use WordPress in just a second, we can actually change our PHP settings here. So PHP, edit the PHP config. I find some of these settings are a little bit low. So we're going to use 8.1 and we just change these settings. So the memory limit can be increased. That's 128, we can double that to 256 for example. Uh, the max file size upload is quite small by default. I think when you're setting up a new site, sometimes you wanna import large files, so you can, you can increase that right up. Same with that post max size, you want, might wanna increase that. Eight megabytes for a post can be a bit small these days, so I'm just gonna increase those, save that in here, and let it do its thing there. And that should be green there, just make sure that saves in properly. From here we can check out the website we just created. So list the websites and the one that we just did was ideas.xyz. We can manage that one. And again, we can scroll down. We want to um, put those rewrite rules on for this as well. So that is force HTTP to HTTPS. We're going to do that. And that looks good. We can scroll down and we can actually install applications here. So WordPress, Git, uh, Presto Shop, or Matic. Let's just pop WordPress on, for example. And we just fill this out. So this is just the title, the username, a password here, and email address. These are for your WordPress credentials. So let's just see how this goes. Click install and start the install. All right, so that looks all good. Successful install. You can visit your site now. Now we can see over at ideas.xyz, we've now got a WordPress site after we refresh the page. So this looks all good. We can access the admin panel of WordPress by going wp-admin here as well. And we can log in. We just use the credentials that we created when we set up this WordPress site. So just pop those in there and log in. Very nice. So from here, you can go to plugins, um, add a migration plugin and bring a WordPress site in, or you can go to appearance and themes and start building a site. So that is your WordPress installed using Subpanel. You'll also notice that you've got the Lightspeed cache already set up to go with your um, Subpanel Lightspeed server. So that is a really nice feature as well. So a few other things worth doing in Subpanel, connect to Subpanel Cloud. This is really helpful. I'll open that one up. So this is a free cloud service that they offer. There's lots of extra features in Subpanel Cloud. So you can sign up for free using the sign up feature here. I'll just go ahead and sign in and show you around. And in our dashboard, we can connect our server just by going servers connect. We have to fill this out. Um, before we fill that out, back on our panel, uh, we want to go to users and API access. We want to give Cyber Panel Cloud access. So we select admin here and we want to enable access there. That looks all good. And we just fill this out. So give it a name, put it in the server IP address. The username is going to be admin. The password is the original password that we use for the Cyber Panel admin. We leave the port empty and then we click connect. So from here, you can monitor your server. There's a few premium features that they will try to sell you, but the main thing you wanna know here is uh, under settings, you can do upgrades here. So this will let you upgrade or downgrade your version as you need to in the future. And this is a safe way rather than trying to do it through the command line or through Cyber Panel. So using Cyber Panel Cloud is the most optimal way of upgrading your server when upgrades come out for Cyber Panel. There's also lots of other good features in Cyber Panel here. So databases, you can get to your um, PHP My Admin in there. You can do backups as well through the backup option. There's lots of security add-ons you can do as well. So they've got um, Immunify AV, the free version is there. You can do virus scanning. The firewall should be on by default. If we click that, we can see the firewall is all ready to go. We can actually turn mod security on. So mod security conf, um, I'd recommend turning that on. You can uh, install it and turn that on. After installing it, go ahead and save the changes and that should be all good. There we go. The other thing we can do now is under security, we should have mod security rules packs down there and we can just click that on and that should have our, our mod security core rules. That looks all good. And the other thing down here under security was our CSF. We can install that as well. Just let it do its thing. That looks okay and okay. So we are pretty much set up now. Like if you want to add multiple websites, you can go through the same process of creating websites. You can add as many domains as you want from here. Just make sure you point your um, DNS, point the um, domain over to the IP address, but basically the same process and repeat it. So you can run as many sites as you want. I think with one gigabyte, um, small websites may be maybe 15 to 20 websites will work okay um, as a rule of thumb. In terms of the actual user experience, like in the dashboard of um, our server here, it's really quick to just navigate around. I really like the 
actual um, experience here. It's quite snappy. Um, I actually just went ahead and put it on the cadence theme here. And you can see I've put my favorite um, template site on here. We can run it through Google PageSpeed Insights and do an analysis just for our conclusions, see how well it's going. I expect this will do really quite well on Google PageSpeed. So this is pretty much as good as it gets. So 99 on mobile, the first content for paint in only 1.1 seconds. So this is pretty much as good as you can get, especially for a $6 server. It's quite good, um, 0 0.3 seconds on desktop. Yeah, really quite nice. So um, top class performance from um, open light speed on Cyber Panel uh, with WordPress websites. The other thing you might be interested in is email. So there's a few ways you can manage your own email. So if you want to use your Cyber Panel server as a um, email server as well, there's one uh, create your own email server with Cyber Panel. Um, personally, I prefer to keep my email separate from my web server. So if you want a free solution, something like the Zoho email setup is free. Also the Cloudflare email forwarding method I did in this tutorial is another great way of getting free email addresses. But really, I think if you're serious about getting professional email, use a service like Google Workspace, Microsoft Outlook, or um, iCloud Plus is also quite good as well if you want reliable um, email that you can guarantee is getting delivered well. But um, I'd go with um, one of those or this one or this one. And um, if you are really wanting to run your own email server, you can check that one out. But um, uh, not really my preference, but I know a lot of you like to do it. So I made that one. So, but I think that pretty much wraps it up. Um, and the other way that I really like setting up Vulture is using Vulture Plus Plesk. That is also a free panel. It does have some limitations. You only have um, three domains maximum, but I think that's okay, especially for a small server. Um, Plesk is backed by a bigger company. So some people will think it's um, a more reliable solution, but some people will prefer open light speed like we did with Cyber Panel. Um, this is an Nginx caching method. So there's a few subtle differences, but both give excellent performance. So it's worth, worth checking that video out as well and seeing which one you prefer because um, both of those can be set up for free. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Um, but anyway, I'll see you next time.